Adelia Redding draft the, reads, the rulings and judgments of my learned brother, Aruna Simon Samani, in this consolidated petition numbers uh, CAPEPC 03, 04, and 05, 2023. I am in complete agreement with his lordship's reasoning and conclusions on all of them. First, for petition numbers PEPC 04, 2023, that is the Allied People's Movement petition. I am of the very fixed view that the issues agitated by the petitioner therein concerning third respondents and alleged qualification, by reason of matters connected to a surrounding his running mate's nomination and relinquishing of his earlier nomination by his party, for the Boronu Central Territorial District having been settled on the Ameri by the Supreme Court in his judgment, in appeal number SCCV 501-2023, in third and first respondents' favor therein, with the APS Court even holding that the said issues did not disqualify them, that, those, that decision constitutes issue estopel, being status defining and so judgment in REM, it binds every person, including non parties to the suit, like the petitioner in petition number CAPC 042023, C. Cotton, and Oyekomi, Soson, and Odemuiwa. Furthermore, by the doctrine of stare decisis, it also binds this court. In fact, it will, in my humble opinion, amount to judicial heresy for this court to resolve, to involve itself. In inquiring by whatever guys into that same issue already settled by the APS court. Coming to petition number CA03 2020 of Peter Obi and another versus INEC and others, and CAPC05 2023, Atiku Abubak and another, again I am of the very fixed view that the two sets of petitioners did not by any means discharge the burden on them of proving that the results of the presidential election of 25th February 2023, as declared by first respondent, were incorrect. Incidentally, their burden is even made heavier by the legal presumption that the votes of an election declared by the official organizing body that INEC is are correct. And it is for the person asserting the contrary to prove it, Buari and INEC, see Buari and INEC. Even their resort to first respondent's failure to keep its initial promise to upload poly unit results of that election to its resolved being portal IREV real time, which failure the alleged evidence is election manipulation, does not help them. And specifically on this allegation of manipulation of election results, the point must be made that since it is their case that from the word go that the election results in issue were manipulated by first respondent in favor of second respondent, and specifically that the manipulation took the form of quote programmed failure of the technological device machines, that is beavers by first respondent by intercepting the results, quarantining warehousing and filtering such results before releasing them to the IRF portal. Two, INEC replacing its in-house IT expert at the 11th hour with a rogue staff, all in a bid to completely control, monitor, and filter data transmitted from the beavers' devices to the electronic system. And three, that Globacom, the internet provider for the beavers and electronic system, was also disconnected by a first respondent to enable it to manipulate the results. With the petitioners in CA, that is uh, the article petition, even going further to undertake to call evidence to prove all those allegations. The burden of proof was on the petitioners to prove those assertions. And that is regardless of whether they are positive or negative. After all, it is they would have failed in the case if no evidence at all was adduced in their petitions. See on that sections 131 of the Evidence Act, Buari and Aine, Kaladegbe, Mi versus Fasomade, Elias and Disu, Dashi and another, Abrat and Railway, Northeast Railway Company. I have taken all this time in making this point because of the argument of both sets of defendants that they only made negative assertions in their petitions. When they alleged that there was nothing wrong with first respondent's transmission system and IREP, so they had no burden to prove it. That the burden of proof was on the respondents who they said positively asserted glitch in real time transmission of their results. Petitioners who directly made manipulation of its e transmission system by first respondent to favor second respondents, a pillar of their case cannot be heard to say it is respondents and not them that had the burden of proof in this case. Incidentally, that assertion of petitioners that INEC simply closed down or blocked its IREV and trans an e-transmission system from the public to enable it to manipulate the election results in favor of second respondents also takes me directly to the more important question in the petition, namely whether that allegation is even worthy of belief given the results declared by INEC for them and the second respondent in the election. To answer that million-dollar question, 
I deem it necessary to resort to the probabilities arising from the facts of that from the facts of the case. That test, otherwise called the probability test. Which test? Celebrated judge Chukudifu Akunne Oputa, JSC, always maintained, and I quote him, is the surest road to the shrine of truth and justice. In the cases of he said so in the case of Dibi Amaka and others, and in Ojegele and others, the first 1989 and the second 1988, I gave these citations. Here, yeah, the assertion of petitioners is that first respondent, INEC, merely used the exit excuse of glitch in his IREF portal to block the public from seeing its poly unit results real time so that it could manipulate and indeed actually manipulate the 25th February 23 presidential elections in favor of second respondent. It is their further contention that the manipulation of IREF by INEC with the said phantom glitch in favor of second respondent was nationwide. The question is, do the results declared by INEC support that hypothesis? They say the taste of the pudding is in the eating. I shall therefore now try to walk us through some of those, these election results to see if that assertion of petitioners is supported by the results declared by INEC and so probable and worthy of belief. In doing that, I shall randomly pick on the results of some states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. I shall be relying on the state summary of the results that is from ECD declared by INEC and has also attached their petition by the petitioners in CAPC 05, that is Article uh, case, which result was also tendered by both sets of petitioners and respondents. So I take first Abia State. There, second respondent, the alleged favored candidate of INEC, for which it was said to have shut down the siren to manipulate results, only garnered a miserly Miserly 8,914 votes. That is as against the Labour Party, which by INEC's declaration polled as many as 327,095 votes. Even the other set of petitioners, complainants, the PDP and its candidates, scored more votes in Abia than INEC's purported favored candidate. They also scored 22,676 votes in Abia and were so recorded by INEC. Those votes I alone are close to three times the votes of second respondents for whom INEC was said to have manipulated results by closing down the siren so that the public would not witness its manipulative activities in favor of second respondent. In any good state, the same favored quote and unquote candidate, second respondent, was again declared credited by INEC to have polled only 4,772 votes in the entire state. Meanwhile, the Labour Party and its candidates were again declared by manipulative and quote and unquote and unfriendly INEC to have scored as much as 428,690 votes in that state. In the same way, PDP and its candidates was also declared by INEC to have won 15,745 votes, a number that is also nearly three times the votes of the so called favored second respondent. In an umbrella state, the same purported favored candidate, second respondent, was declared by his alleged friend, INEC, to have scored only 5,111 votes. Meanwhile, the Labour Party, whose candidate, first petitioner, in CAPC, I must take judicial notice of, video section 124 of the Evidence Act is from that state, again was declared to have polled as much as 584,621 votes. Again, like any good state, the PDP and his candidate was declared by INEC to have polled 9,036 votes, a number that is also nearly double the votes of, quote, INEC favored, end quote, second respondent. In neighboring Delta State, the same INEC favored candidate, second respondent was declared by INEC to have scored 90,180 votes. That is as against the Labour Party and its candidates, which is credited by the same bias, quote, and unquote, INEC, to have scored as much as 179,917 votes. In that same Delta State, the PDP and its candidates scored 161,600 votes, again nearly double the votes of second respondent. In Adamawa State of the PDP and its candidate, the same favored second respondent was declared by INEC to have scored only 105,648 votes, while the PDP and its candidate were declared by the bias, quote and unquote, INEC to have scored as much as 214,012 votes. In Imo State, the same purported INEC favored candidate, second respondent, was declared by INEC to have scored only 66,406 votes, while the Labour Party and its candidate is declared by the same INEC to have polled as much as 360,495 votes. 
In a boy state, the Labour Party again scored as much as 259,738 votes. That is as alleged, alleged INEC favored second respondent, who by INEC's declaration, that is his friend's declaration, again pulled a relatively miserly 42,402 votes. The PDP is said to have scored 13,503 votes there. Even in Lagos State, where second respondent was once held sway as elected governor, the Labour Party and its candidate was again declared by bias, quote and unquote, INEC to have beaten second respondent with almost 10,000 votes. The Labour Party was declared by INEC to have pulled 582,455 votes as against 572,606 polled by second respondent and so declared by INEC. It is a similar story in the federal capital, of, the capital territory of Abuja, where INEC has its headquarters and supposedly carried out, stroke directed, all its, quote, manipulative and biased activities in favor of second respondent. That petition has claimed it in the, in, the, in the election. Second respondent and his political party still lost there. In fact, by the result, second respondent, second respondent friendly, quote, and unquote, INEC declared in the federal capital territory of Abuja, Second respondent could not even make 25% of the votes, total votes cast there. He was said to have polled only 90,902 votes. That amounts to just 18.991% of total votes cast in the FCT. Yet, INEC declared that result. That is as against 281,717 votes, amounting to 58.856% of the total votes. The same INEC declared for Labour and his candidates. There are also other states, including Kazina State of the immediate past president of this country, a member of the second respondent who was still in office at the time of the elections, a part of such take judicial notice of video section 124 of the Evidence Act. There again, second respondent and his party, the APC, also the density president, was declared by the same INEC to have lost the petitioners in uh, CAPC 05 2023, that is uh, um, Atiku Abubaka. Now, if all these results declared by INEC for each of the states for the two sets of petitioners and second respondent is anything to go by, then INEC must be an abysmally poor manipulator, if not even an imbecilic one. Surely, it would not go through all the stress of closing down this IREF and blocking the public from seeing its manipulative efforts in favor of second respondent, as alleged by the petitioners, only for it to still end up favoring the petitioners with jumbo votes and posting miserly figures for his favored second respondent. It is said that all men stamp as probable that which they would have said or done under similar circumstances, and as improbable that which they themselves would not have said or done under the same set of similar circumstances. Things inconsistent with human knowledge and experience are properly rated as improbable. <coughs> End quote. See again Oputa GSE on, on this, in Onwa and the state and Bozin and the state. At any rate, why did any of these two sets of Petitioners not tender even a single polling unit result issued by HINEC to their polling unit agents to support their claim of manipulation of election results by HINEC, even as they all agree that they had agents in the polling units. I have thought that this is the best and most effective way of proving the manipulation of election results alleged by them. After all, the polling unit is the only place where voting takes place and so also constitutes the building block of election results. That much is stated in paragraph 90 of HINEC guidelines and the uh, for the election, and also Obuda Nono and Awusi and Odele. In short, the, the allegation of the petitioners that INEC shut down its IREF to manipulate votes for second respondent just, just does not add up for me. If anything, the probability is arising from the results INEC declared nationwide as history above rather seem to me to eloquently support its position that its, its inability to upload the polling unit results real time, as earlier I promised, was not deliberate but caused by technical issues outside its control that afflicted its e-transmission system, which is used its claims, its claims made it impossible for its e-transmission e system to map the up uploaded polling unit results for the presidential election to any specific state. That it claims is unlike the much smaller national assembly elections that were conducted simultaneously with the presidential election. It is that phenomena it describes as glitch that was giving it an HTTP 500 error, which eventually, eventually resultantly delayed real-time public viewing of the said polling unit results. That conclusion also takes me to another big issue in this case, namely the evidential value of the European Union Observer Mission Report on the 2023 election, presidential election over which quite a mountain has been made up by both sets of petitioners. That report was tendered by the petitioners in 
petition of a PEPC, that is Obia and another, as Exhibit X2, and by the petitioners in CEPEC 05 as Exhibit ROA27. The impression given by both sets of petitioners is that the said report, which in any case has been even ruled admissible by us in petition number CAPEPC 03 2023, is like gospel truth of what happened in the election. And so it must be accepted by this court and the conduct of the presidential election declared corrupt or at the very least below par, regardless of whether or not its authors presented themselves in court to defend their opinions. That stance, I am afraid, is a non sequitur. It's a complete non sequitur. Without the makers of that report presenting themselves in court to face cross examination, to authenticate their opinions, that report, and I dare to add even the ECOWAS report of the same elections, tendered by second and third respondents, the petition numbers in the two petitions, are completely valueless and inadmissible for the purposes of authenticating the opinions expressed in them by the makers. See first on that the cases of Yesom and Peter side and Said Yakowa. It also makes no difference that the said reports have been put in the form of print. Books, it must be noted, cannot be cross-examined. On this, I find support in the celebrated case of Idudu and others versus Okumagba, where the Supreme Court, 1976, where the Supreme Court had this to say, and let me quote what the Supreme Court said. It said, as for the law involved in Idudu and Okumagba, we would like to point out that it is now well settled that there are five ways in which ownership of land may be proved. In our view, not only was the evidence of the witnesses, that is continuation, not only was the evidence of the witnesses called by the appellants rightly rejected by Leonard Trial Judge for good and sufficient reasons, we also think that he was right in not attaching any weight to the views expressed in the book cited in support of such traditional evidence. As Lionel Brett JSC, as event was rightly in our view, once pointed out in a Leonard address given by him at the University of Lagos to the Nigerian Association of Law Teachers, Mola quote again, the courts are not to be hypnotized by the authority of print. The crucial fact is that books cannot be cross-examined, either as to the opinions expressed or as to the claims of the author to have special knowledge. If the author is living, there is no reason why he should not be tendered as an expert when this difficulty would vanish. More quotes, end quote of that side. Then the Supreme Court went on to say, moreover, none of the authors of these books in that uh, Kumagba's case testified in support of the views stated therein, and no explanation was given for the omission. For all these reasons, we share the apprehensions of the learned trial judge about the value or weight of the traditional evidence as narrated by each of these authors, particularly as the authenticity and impartiality of the sources of their narratives cannot, for obvious reasons, be easily ascertained." End quote. I want to say that is the exact same situation we are confront, confronted with here as regards both the European Observer Mission Report and its brother ECOWAS Election Observer Report. For purposes of proving this, or the opinions expressed in them by their makers, neither of them is of any higher value than the mere sheets of paper on which it is recorded. And for those who like the petitioners, are enamored by the now very familiar patronizing judgments passed on elections, regularly passed on elections, by European election observer missions every four years. Even as the same Europeans have maintained a deafening silence on the never-ending complaints of former President Donald, Duke, Donald Trump, sorry, that the year 2020,000 presidential elections of the United States that saw him out of office, office was also a fraud, it may interest them to know that Sir Justice Lionel Brett, who made the comment cited approvingly by the Supreme Court in Okumagba's case that I read above, was also a European. He's British. He was British. I think I intend to stop here. I think I've said enough. It is for these few additions, but much more for the more, far, more, far more illuminating reasons advanced by my brother, Arun Asaman in GSC. His rulings and judgments, which reasons I concur with without reservation, that I also hold all three consolidated petitions not proved and thereby enter another dismissing all of them, and I find the declaration of second respondent Bola Ahmed Tinubu by second respondent as the person duly and properly returned winner of the 25th February 2023 presidential election of this country and duly elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I also abide by all other consequential orders, including that as the cause contained in the leading judgment. Uh, I now invite my learned brother by my extreme left to present his own judgment. Well, last but not the least, <laughs> um, I've read before now a draft of the lead judgment just